Hey, look out, guys. <laughs> Here we <laughs> are. Jumping straight in there for another episode of Earth Fistful of Collars, your favorite jujitsu podcast. Back around the blue table once again, Howell T, Chase Smith, Reed Connell, and Will Safford. Full team back in attendance for the first time in what seems like a long time. It's true. It's right. Nice to be wow. back. Good one to you. Have we ever done one, all four of us, on this table? I don't think in the new studio. Yeah. In, in the, okay. We yeah, have, it's yeah. been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I yeah. just forget, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so many things have happened in the meantime, so... But this is it. We're back, and man, it is a busy, busy period. We've got a bunch of events coming up, so this is why the guys have been running around, taking care of everything, why we've been split up. But uh, it is a it is a really interesting period because we're coming into no gi season officially, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, that's the way it's going. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, it's like the first six months of the year, everybody's focused on gi, and then the second half of the half of the year, they everybody switches and, and focuses on no gi, and so here we are. We've arrived no gi season. I love people teasing too that um, they're getting ready for ADCC. I've seen a few Already? ADCC like yeah. training camps, like you know, trials, just on our Instagram. Trials, are trials coming is coming up. up. So uh, first event for trials, I think, in the U.S. is in November, if I'm right. No October. Octo yeah. No wait, no, it's so European. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're October. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November third, North American trials, New Jersey. Man. So, anyways, that's that's on the top of it. How fun is that that we're gonna get go through that whole process again? ADCC is is, is so amazing. It's such a special time. It's, uh, the Man, do you know what? It's that whole wild ride of like following all the international trials events and seeing who's qualifying. Because and then seeing who those... got the invites. Like, yeah. man, it's such a fun process. Because they run those events all over the world in the run up, right? You have the um, You've got the European trials, you've got the Asian trials, you've got the North American, South American. Uh, man, it's just so much. And, and there's actually this um, European trials coming up in Romania at the beginning of October. Uh, Asian trials are in December. First North American trials are in November. So it's kicking off pretty really, hard. It really is kind of like the Olympics of jiu-jitsu, you know? It's like it's, it's rare. You only get to see it every two years, and it really is the, the entire world, and it's the best of the best. Yeah, man. So, what do you think? What do you think for the uh, for the trial? Are there any uh, breakout grapplers that you think will uh, will shake things up at ADCC the next one coming around? Well, that's like one of the, the funnest parts of the whole thing, right? Is I mean, Craig Jones was right. A, no was one a, expected that. Was a guy who won the trials. Um, the Mickey Ryan. Yeah, I, I think yeah. Nikki. I think Nikki is in a, a prime place right now. He, he's got to be a lot stronger, a little bit more mature. Been training two years since he had that breakout match at ADCC. So, if I had to call it from way out here, way in the distance. I think Nicky Ryan might, might do big things. Oh, wow. Are you wow. picking him for 66 kilo champion 2019? I'm saying he upsets some people. I don't know if he's going to be the champ. It's hard to say champ, but I, I think he makes it a, a decent way. And I mean, you have to expect that, um, I don't know, Carina might, 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 not, be might not be there, the, mm -hmm. the, the champion. Do you think he'll send Kennedy instead? <laughs> that's that's true, right? Kennedy's a black belt now, right? Yeah. Cabrini Kennedy Jr. Versus, uh, Nikki be in there. I don't know. Kennedy, Kennedy nice. might have to have to go out and win a, win a trials, um, but I would love to see Kennedy mixing it up in the in the trials. That would be awesome. I mean, it would kind of be cool though, right? That if Kennedy got the invite in place of his dad. Oh, that would be crazy. because you know? usually true. the returning champion always gets that mm. slot coming straight back, right? Mm. Automatically invited. But maybe Cabrini's like, you know what? Passing it off, you know, and uh, let the next let let the next generation take over. And could you imagine a rematch between Kennedy and Nikki I in can. the finals? Ooh, are we, so are we calling it years <laughs> out? Are we calling it? You Kennedy it first. Oh. <laughs> the callers. Oh my God, that would be some. We're excited. We're excited for ADCC because, of course, they fought at the Studio 540. Great when, match. When was that? End of 2016. December 2016. 2016. First time uh, Felipe and Gordon met as well, I believe. No gi and uh, started that kicked off. That rivalry that we but still think see of now. How much so those much guys has changed since then, right? Since then, yeah. yeah, exactly. Kennedy Kennedy won the uh, brown belt world championship, right? And then uh, Nicky Ryan just been beating everyone that he faces, taking out black belts as a Gio Martinez, belt. Oh, number one ranked Kasai. ten planet black belt. Yeah, man, I guess Nogi season's pretty fun, huh? I guess I guess <laughs> it sounds like a good time. <laughs> but we don't have to wait to, to trials, you know. Uh, Nogi really kicks off, I think, for us next weekend with yeah. Kasai Pro 3. Mm. Kasai Pro 3, this is an intriguing one, right? So you got three major super fights on the card. Who's about Paul Harris versus Craig Jones? Whew, somebody's Insanity. getting their leg Insanity. twisted in that one, right? <laughs> Anytime Bruce Mars on a card, you're just like, man, what is going to happen? <laughs> yeah. You know you're going to see some... He's such a terrifying athlete. I mean, you just look at him, he's physically imposing. He's a terrifying man. He's got a bit of a reputation for holding on to things a bit too long, you know. It, it's the perfect match. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good match. 
Hats off to Craig, though, for, for jumping in the ring. Yeah. Man. What was yeah. it he said to you, Chase, about it? he would never turn a match down from fear? Yeah, he couldn't. He said he couldn't live with himself if he turned down a match from fear. And that it inspires him to go the distance, to, to train harder, to study more tape. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting in this interview I did with Craig the other day was, was how he watches tape. He said there's no secret to, to watching film, but you just have to watch a lot of it and to study what the entry points that work and what fails and um, really study what fails more because then you can see what's at the highest level these guys aren't really making mistakes on entries they're just being defended well mm. so you can kind of see what adjustments you can make and he also said that Paul Harris's uh, knee bar out of the outside heel hook is more dangerous yeah uh, so yeah. that's a key thing to look out for um, interesting you spin out of the outside heel hook right to try and for your leg and then Paul Harris turns the other way puts you in a knee bar and finishes the match Saw, it's, quite a, it's quite an old school kind of leg lock sequence of attacks, right? I remember Eddie Cummings describing it to me as like one of the first leg lock sequences that he learned. Mm. And he considered it kind of like, you know, basic entry level stuff. But like they always say, when it comes to like the high level black belts, like a lot of the techniques that they're employing are just actually the basics done really, really well. So you have to imagine how good is Tokino's leg lock. Like his, his actual game might be quite simple and direct, but you put in the fact that he is a, a, a long time black belt with a, a ton of experience and he's a physical beast. Like, man, you kind of feel I wonder okay. what he's going to weigh in at uh, versus Craig. I yeah, wonder. That's a good question. Wait, I we, didn't actually see we, any we, weight limit marked for this match we either. We put up a, uh, a clip the other day. We reposted a clip of uh, Paul Harris training, getting ready for this fight, and he looked massive. He did. I mean, he's a shorter guy. When does he never look massive? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's an imposing guy. Little Tree Stump is like the best nickname of all time. Right? <laughs> We know we know Craig has a technique, right? He he uh, he choked Leandro Lowe, but now we know that he's game too. He's he's down to, to get out there. One thing I do want to see him do a little bit more of, stay on the feet. I want to see him wrestle a little. Oh, bit I don't more. think we're seeing that this I, time. With, with Bruce <laughs> I think this is the so. last thing we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah. Might have to wait. Might have to That's wait for that one. That's a brave move. But I mean, let's be honest though. There's not gonna be that much of a size difference in terms of uh, Craig versus Mahara. Craig's Maharas. a big guy too. Yeah. He is yeah. right. I mean, he's like he's way over six foot. He's um, probably walking around a solid like 190, you mm -hmm. know, like maybe Safe. even a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like the difference is the body types. Yeah, because Husmar's not that tall, right? Right. <laughs> like 5'7", 5'8", yeah. something yeah. like that, yeah. But just an absolute brick shit house. Like, <laughs> really is. Yeah. I, I remember I went to watch him train at BTT this is a few years back when he before he left. And um, I mean, he was toying with his training partners. And I remember at one point, he was rolling with a guy that probably was about 180, something like that. And he kind of just lets the guy pass his guard to side control. He lies down flat. He just no hands and just sits up. Like the, like the Undertaker in WWE. <laughs> Remember that when he just sits up straight? And the guy was catapulted across the freaking room, man. Could you imagine if you're just like a blue belt and Husamar Paharis is, is your training partner? I would like, not do that. <laughs> with, with no <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, he calls you out, he's looking for a training partner and points at you. Sometimes I wonder if he's actually being rough or that's just that's just him. Like, he can't help it. He's just such a big, powerful specimen that it's just it's just in him. You know? I agree he, with he, that. He, I think it's the latter. I really do, yeah. I mean, you know, he's just a he's a farm boy, you know? There's no nothing sophisticated, nothing no finesse. It's just everything's just get the job done, so but that's not the uh, only match of the night at Kasai. There's a ton of other good ones there. <laughs> there are a ton. What are the super fights do we have, Chase? I'm looking forward to, to Gilbert Burns versus AJ Haggis arm. So mm -hmm. AJ was no, supposed to be face uh, Gio Martinez. They had a, a war of words kind of on social media over the last few months since Kasai Pro 2, where AJ called out uh, a bunch of people, including Eddie Bravo <laughs> and Joe Rogan, <laughs> saying they didn't know shit. And uh, that fired up Gio, among other things. But Gilbert Burns has stepped in. Gio got injured. And, man, Gilbert is a... Beast. He He's is. a no gi world champion, uh, a gi world champion, current UFC fighter. Talk and about being game. He is oh game yeah, he for fights every anywhere, yeah. any it's any true. place. He's been UFC fight, fight to win. What was he? He's been in a couple other. He's in Marianas. Marianas yeah. Open. Anywhere that will have him, Gilbert's down to, th to compete. <laughs> so. He must be one of the most active combat athletes over the last over this year. I would say he's probably competed as much as anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if but think about it as an MMA fighter, like if jujitsu is what brought you to the dance, you know, why not stick with that? Why not keep doing? Like we see a lot of guys get into MMA and then they. Then we don't see him in the jiu-jitsu scene anymore. Why not keep those skills sharp? And I mean, Gilbert said this to me in Guam for the Marianas that 
he's super happy there's more opportunities to actually make money in coffee yeah. now. He says, you know, back when I left in 2011 or whatever year that was, there, there wasn't any opportunity to make any money except maybe one or two tournaments a year at best. Now he can do it every weekend. Mm. So you can see that's uh, an option. And, and I don't think he um, is all that fond of AJ. From from what I can see on social media, he's like... He's not he's, part of the fan club? He's he's <laughs> ready to get out there and, and uh, show AJ a thing or two. So. Well, you know who he's good friends with? Wagner Hosha. And him and AJ have a bit that's of a... True. They don't like each other. They've got a bit that's of a thing. No, I'm not aware I've of that, do yeah. they? <laughs> They've met before, and it's it's been interesting for everyone involved. Wagner will be there, too? <laughs> Wagner, yeah, of course, he's an eight man, right? So he is, um, he is indeed, yeah. Well, there's one more super fight first, right? There's right. the John Callistein versus Gianni Grippo, which I think is a, uh, a really intriguing match because um, John Callistein is one of the breakout members from the Henzo Gracie team, one of the next kind of like wave of the leg locking crew that they've got. They've got that really deep squad, don't they? But yeah. he's out there, he's an EBI winner, um, smaller guy, like more kind of like a 135er, but to mm. be honest, competes up just because of lack of opportunities. Mm. For some reason, people don't want to face him. He's kind of built like Tanquinho, or Tokinho, now that I'm I thinking about it. He's very stocky, not mm -hmm. very He's, tall. he's yeah. not a big guy, man, you know? He's, uh, and, and he's actually really, really dangerous with those leg locks, so I can see why people well, are maybe reluctant excited for to this face one. him. It's gonna be yeah. a great challenge for him, too. This is like the first time we've seen him on the scene against someone who's as established as, yeah. as, as Gianni. A big step well, up. His, his win over Gio came in overtime, right? And, mm. you know, like, uh, the thing is that it's always that caveat, isn't it? Oh, well, you didn't finish some regulation, you went on mm. technicality or whatever, which I don't necessarily think holds up, but people will say that. But in a submission only, I think it's submission only, but in a match with Gianni Grippo, who is, you know, an extremely well-known guy, and actually has got a really well-developed game to deal with the leg locks. Mm -hmm. We put up the match of him versus Gary Tonin the other day. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think of that? Yeah, it definitely looked like he frustrated Gary. Um, a lot of times with, with the way he was able to kind of bear and bolo out of some of those leg entries and things like that. It was a huge question mark going into Kasai Pro 2. Um, in his opening group, he had um, Enrico Coco, who is a pioneer of leg locks and has a really slick game. And I thought, personally going in, that Enrico might might undo Gianni, that he might have the, the answer. But he dealt with him and then Gary later. So he shows that he's got plenty of awareness and ability to deal with leg locks. And I think the, the onus on, on this match in particular is on Calistine to come up with a game plan. Mm. Gianni is, is such a student of the game. He studies, he trains all the time. And um, I said this in the preview that I wrote last weekend. You know, he was probably studying John Calistine before he even signed the contract. He, he knew exactly what he was getting into. So um, it's going to be, a, I think, a tough match for John. Yeah. That's a, that's a, sorry, that's a 15-minute submission-only bout. So uh, yeah. no overtime, just a judge's decision at the end. Um, are we going to see a submission? That's the thing. That that was the difference between Kasai one when he was faced Gary Tonin, it was points, right? So he was able to beat True. Gary and be a lot of those guys on points. But he's not afraid of the leg attack game. He gets right in there and that plays into his Baron Bowl game. So if Gianni can get to the back, which he's gonna obviously try to do, I think then we definitely could see a submission. He's got a great rear naked choke, but he's gotta get through that, that leg game. Two East Coast guys too, so that I think a Out lot of, of New York. Yeah, yeah, both yeah. of them will have big fan bases in the audience there. Yeah, the, cross town rivalry. A little the, bit. the venue that yeah. Kasai Pro Three is going to be in looks so sick. I'm so excited to to be there for that. And like I said, I think both guys are going to have a, a big contingent, so that one should be loud. And you mentioned there briefly uh, about Wagner Hocher in for the eight man. The eight man's looking spicy. Got the eight man's Mike crazy. Perez, Masahiro Iwasaki, Jason Rao, Renato Canuto, PJ Barge, Wagner Hocher, Marcin Held, and Matthias Lutz. Oof. That's such a wide lineup of guys. Yeah. You know, you've got guys from all different types of schools. You've got Iwasaki, who's out of Japan. You've got a 10th Planet guy. It, this is gonna be it's gonna be awesome. He, Mateus Luz is almost more of a gi guy too, but he won the the challenge, so he's clearly very game, and he trains at Marcelo, so uh, they spend half their time there doing nogi all year. But um, yeah, I I just love Kasai's round robin format and the groups. It really makes it something special. Um, there's there's a storyline being built mm -hmm. throughout the show, so I, I love seeing it evolve. Yeah, because they fight in two round robin groups, and then the guy who emerges the top of each group goes through into the finals. There's a, yeah, a third place match as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, the, the guys, there's not going to be any easy runs to the final because they have to face everybody in that group to get there. 
And you got like veteran grapplers, obviously Wagner, Mike Perez, and Masahiro. But I'm really excited about the the kind of um, upstarts that that Kasai is given a shot. Guys like Jason Rao, PJ Barch, who, who's um, you know one of the best guys from Tenth Planet, and um, who's the who's the other guy that I'm thinking of? Oh yeah, Mateus. Mateus mm -hmm. loses. He's still a brown belt, but he's a new guy on, on the scene as well. So like it's gonna be great to see those guys mix it up with the veterans like Wagner and, and Perez and things. I think a lot of those guys are gonna surprise a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say my money's on, on Wagner. He's just so hard to beat. And he's he's nasty. He's nasty, man. Yeah, I love watching. Nasty I man. love watching. He's nasty, <laughs> he's but you also got Mike Perez in there, and Mike Perez is he's nasty too. Yeah, he, he gets out there. But I still, game. I've still got off on that uh, that wrist lock that he hit on Craig Jones mm, yeah. at last Kasai. Remember, Broke that his was hand. dirty. He did right. Yeah. And I want to say, out of the whole lineup, I think Mike Perez might have the best leg attacks. So a lot of these guys we've never seen. I've never seen Iwasaki in you know a, a leg attack position. Hanato Kanuto, we saw him with yeah, Eddie Cummings. Yeah, I mentioned Hanato. Yeah. But he uh, he stayed away. You know he didn't want to get involved with the with the leg lock game at all. And then just Hanato in there is just like a little spice. You know every match that Hanato has, with no matter who it is, it's going to be a crazy exciting match. He's and going to be tossing somebody through the air. Yeah. Somebody's going to be doing game. a cartwheel. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so and, and he's the guy who could definitely win it as well. Of course, he's the lightweight champion moving up. To, to this welterweight, so man, that's such a crazy eight, man. I'm super excited for it. Both Hanato and Mike have lots of experience too on on Kasai, and that's that'll true. definitely be a factor. You know, Mike uh, did an interview with him, I guess, two weeks ago, and he was saying that if he could do it again, he wouldn't focus on particular opponents. Mm -hmm. You know, he went in there thinking about uh, Craig Jones and DJ Jackson and Mateus Denise, and he ended up not even being in mm. their group initially, so he's kind of thrown off his game. And this mm. time, he just said, "Look, I, I kind of know the formula, I know how Kasai works, and I'm just going to worry about." What I can do to prepare and be ready for anyone, I think that's that's sound advice in a case where it's it's a round robin event. Totally, you don't, you don't know who you're going to be facing. You know, Runner up in the uh, in the middleweight yeah, tournament, exactly. so he does get to do it again and, yes. and try to implement that. Yeah, the groups are going to really um, define how that tournament is likely to play out. But we should find out those groups next week. So look out for an uh, exclusive reveal on Flow Grappling for those in the coming days. But um, yeah, Kazai Pro 3 is not the only Nogi event coming up. Like we said, it's Nogi season. Uh, in September, there's a, a number of events um, kicking off with the UWW United World Wrestling Grappling World Championships in Kazakhstan, that's September 6th through 9th. Um, now we discussed this back in the old podcast when we had, first had the podcast. Um, we would discuss it quite a lot, right? These grappling events mm. in Russia and in Central Asia that not too many people know about because they didn't really have a platform to be seen on. But um, I would always talk a lot about how much they excited me because there's like this whole, uh, just an entire world of yeah. grapplers out there who we never see competing in the West. We never see competing in IBJJF, right? Mm -hmm. Very few of them make it through to ADCC because of the trials process and stuff. But then you go to these UWW grappling events and they're competing in no gi events that allow reaping, but no heel hooks, right? And they are just tossing each other around. They're amazing wrestlers, as you would expect, right? Mm -hmm. They're all from places like Dagestan and from Kazakhstan, all these crazy Stan countries. And then, you know, <laughs> they're just like monster wrestlers with really good submissions. It's like, how could you not be excited to watch that? It just sounds awesome. There's always right? some crazy scrambles. I know we usually do at least one or two articles a year. Like, you gotta watch this hour of footage that we found on YouTube, these Russian grapplers. And it's, it's, it's a different metagame, though. Like, they, totally. they never take the back. It's the weirdest thing. that they, they, they have, like, this wrestler's mentality where yeah. they either pin a guy or do something <clears throat> where... Or they ride the back. Or they ride, ride the back. Set the hooks, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so it's... But they're still going for a submission. So you see a lot of different looks, and it's a, it's a fun way to sort of just view grappling differently. I, mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. It's super event. exciting. The, just the, the wrestling, you know? It's, it's like a wrestling-focused type of jiu-jitsu where you see these guys where they might get, like, an advantageous position, but then the guy wrestles up out of it, and he's mm -hmm. coming back and it's just back and forth and back and forth for the entire match. So, yeah, this is it's going to be a good one as well. And we've got a couple of other Nogi events in, um, in September. We've got uh, Grapple Fest, which is uh, featuring Craig Jones back at it, the traveling vagabond of he's professional grappling, yeah, he's fighting Mateus Denise in the, uh, in, the, in the main event of Grapple Fest. That's in Liverpool, England, September 15th. Great match. Same weekend, Nogi Pans in New York, IBJJF, their first major Nogi tournament of the season. Uh, they've got their Worlds coming up in December as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of September, in New York again, man, what is it about New York and Nogi? I don't know. Right. But 
Rise Invitational on September 28th, which is another professional uh, grappling event with just a series of super fights. And we got the last one you can watch on Flow Grappling. That was a lot of fun. We saw some good matches in there too, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. A lot of those, um, that Rise Invitational does a good job of showcasing this next level of, of New York talent usually. So that you're looking for the guys who are going to be tearing up the scene at Nogi Pans, you know, and things like that. Um, definitely Rise is the place to, to check those guys out. Awesome. Well, what about no geek? Like, what matches or athletes in, in any of those tournaments we've just been talking about there? Like, it, it, it's generally it's a slightly different kind of uh, series of faces to expect, and um, it's definitely very different games. So, what about those events coming up there? Is anybody or anything you're looking forward to in particular? I think Craig Jones, Mateus Denise. Yeah, you, you can't <laughs> I mean, deny it's a great yeah, match. That's that was be the, the one, one that, that a lot of people were predicting at, uh, at Kasai 2. Oh, we didn't see it. We didn't get to see it. So, yeah. now we get to Press see this. spoiler. Uh huh. Um, but, you know, we get to see kind of like a, a wrestler top player in uh, Mateus Denise against the guard leg locker in Craig Jones. So, um, and, you know, when we saw Mike Perez versus Mateus Denise, uh, Perez, although he's a wrestler, he does have really good leg locks. Um, Denise was able to, to win, was, was able to pull out the win. So um, it's anyone's game. You know, anyone can, can walk away with that one. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. And, um I'm also, you know, personally, I have a vested interest to kind of see what the current state of grappling is like in the UK as well, right? Mm. Where I came from, I'm kind of interested to see how it's developed over there because I haven't been back for a while and I certainly haven't been to any grappling events there. So, you know, we see some of the British grapplers coming through on the scene, like um, Ashley Williams. Oh, yeah, he's on Kasai. On Kasai. Mm. Yeah. On the undercard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The undercard. Um, Stuart Cooper's uh, on, that, on that card as well. On, on, the, on Grapple Fest? The Grapple, Grapple Fest, Fest yeah, yeah. He was a BOA Super 8 veteran, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, there's, um, there's definitely a few guys coming through, and I'm interested to see what their what their level is like. You know, so it should be fun. Um, I'm looking forward to obviously No Gear Worlds in December. That's uh, that's always a good no one. Worlds right? is a great event. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's always some really exciting matches. Guys are willing to really go for, it, for go for gold, maybe a little bit more because they know there's a two or three week break before the season starts again. So we saw some crazy performances last year. Keenan did it, it had a wonderful uh, showing at Nogi Worlds. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Hulk did double gold, I believe. Double, double gold, gold last year. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, there's no there's no reaping, there's no heel hooks, there's no none of that. But I think that just encourages more wrestling. You know, you're standing up more. Guys aren't just immediately mm -hmm. pulling guard and going to the the leg attack Was game. Was it Cyborg so. and Joel Gabriel that had a great kind of wrestling match? I think it might have been. I think, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, Cyborg kind of th threw. I think. Oh yeah, there were. Joel, I mean, there were a ton well. last oh, year. The and then, and then yeah. Hulk tapped out Joel Gabriel in the final. Is that right? Yeah. And then there was also uh, DJ Jackson Hulk was was an awesome match. No, I remember the uh, Jackson Souza Lucas. Oh right, Jackson Souza. Yeah, that was. A what crazy was match. Lucas in the comebacks, dude? I know. Yeah, at Worlds with Mateus and East. That was. That's true. One of the wildest matches I've seen in my heart, life, dude. <laughs> um, well, there's lots to look forward to, but I gotta say, possibly one name that I'm looking forward to coming back the most is. Uh, Gordon Ryan. Oh! oh yes. Gordon Ryan is a free agent. That <laughs> means that he's going to be back on the scene doing like he was notorious for doing, making those call outs, setting up those big money matches, and uh, just taking on whoever he can. So uh, he's been sidelined since earlier this year. He had one match in all of 2018. One match, one super fight, and he was sidelined for a chunk of that with, uh, with he got a case of Mercer, and, um, you know, he's been like suffering ill effects from the antibiotics that he had to take and as a result but he said that he's on the mend and he's out of his uh, his previous contract and he's now so looking for names who who do you think is a potential matchup for I think Chase Ryan. had a good uh, good nomination yesterday man I would love to see <laughs> Nogi Bushesha. I, oh. I think that's the money match. You can't deny Call that. It right that now. is a Amazing. money match. That is a money match. And the match, gi, I'm not man. as curious, and I don't think Gordon even wants to go that level. No, not yet. Start. No, no. But um, my my God, that's a no gi match. I want. <laughs> That'd be a crazy one for sure. I mean, I think we were we talked a little bit about that match, uh, maybe before ADCC, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't as buzzworthy of a match because. Because um, I guess Gordon hadn't really proved himself as sure. much yet, not you know, point, not yeah. at that level. Um, so now that Gordon is a ADCC champion coming back around now, that is a very, very attractive matchup. Gordon versus Bushesha, that no, that would be fun. It's a real possibility, I feel, you know, because Gordon, he obviously took gold in his weight class, silver in the absolute. Um, you know, Bushesha is not even going to entertain a match with somebody unless they prove themselves. Yeah. And that's 
about as good as you can get. You know, you place gold and silver in your first ADCC. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's a strong statement. So I, I, I'm not saying Bouchesha has to take the match. Obviously, you know, it's up to him. But, you know, Gordon has a case for asking for it now, right? Yeah. Whereas before, I just love the idea of someone who is so versed in leg locks versus a predominantly, like, Bouchesha is a gi guy, right? That That's what he's known for. I mean, he does have ADCC titles, but, you know, most of his victories come in the gi. Um, you know, a leg locker versus just a a, a, a bear of a, a beast, <laughs> yeah. a beast, a complete savage. Who I mean, he's got everything. You know, he's got a good half guard. And, yeah, he's got kind of a traditional game, though. It, it's sort of the the old school mentality, mm -hmm. right? Of of training gi to get better, and like I'll just take no gi for a month before ADCC, and <laughs> it's enough. Yeah, and versus right. you know Gordon Ryan who came up in no gi more or less. So. Yeah, you have to look pretty hard to find matches of Gordon in the gi. I will say the one that uh, Gordon wants himself is John Jones. <laughs> that's that's. I don't know if he's trolling this or he really wants it, but um, well, John's been putting it out there on his Twitter big, saying that he's looking for grappling matches. Yeah. I don't know if he wants Gordon, but I watch. I think Gordon would would just tear through John Jones. I mean. John Jones, I mean, what, is he is he a brown belt now? Is he a purple belt? I think he's, I think he's a blue belt. Yeah, I think he's, he's, a, blue he's belt. a blue belt. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he was a wrestler, right? He was like a, yeah. Oh, yeah. a D1 yeah. wrestler, and obviously he's a great uh, martial artist, but I just think the caliber that Gordon has risen to is way above John Versus John, John Jones. Jones, no heel hooks, though. No, you know, that is a little bit more interesting. No, I still think Gordon takes it. I think Gordon wins. Yeah, he, I agree. He's got that savage triangle series of back tanks and the back takes yeah. and everything. Yeah, he's good, man. So. But I'd watch. I would absolutely watch. And, and John yeah. is such a freak physical specimen. You never really can count him out. I mean, mm. I don't know. I would definitely put my money on Gordon, but I would be curious to watch. Okay, Bouchesha, John Jones. Who would you pick Gordon to go up against? Um, I mean... It's uh, kind of a, a safe bet, but but I, I will watch um, Gordon versus Felipe Pena oh, any, so I was gonna <laughs> say. any day any day of the week. You know, I know that's that's one that that Gordon probably wants back, and it's you know the only guy to to have beaten um, Gordon twice. I, I think is what he said. I think I saw on his Instagram. Yep. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's one that I would I would definitely watch watch again and. Um, that's, that Felipe's was, been killing it too yeah. since yeah. since he's gone. But I'm definitely happy that that Gordon's back. You know, there was a time a couple years ago, right, where Gordon it seemed like Gordon was you know calling somebody out every weekend, taking a fight every weekend, calling people to his gym and saying, "Hey, if you want to you want to have a match, come to my gym." You know, and so we were watching a lot of of Gordon Ryan, a lot of him competing and stuff. And I know he's had some had some health issues and stuff these last couple months or so, but very happy, hopefully, to see Gordon back on the circuit and, and mixing things up. It's always a little funner, I think. With, oh, with Gordon Ryan. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, gotta... that's me. Right. Well, I was going to say Felipe Pena, because I think everybody wants to see that, so no surprise. But you know what? One match we've never seen, I'd love to see, Herbert Santos. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Herbert versus Gordon. And you know, Gordon was trying to get that match, right? And they kind of, they were circling each other for a little while there. Gordon was uh, talking his usual game and, and Herbert was like, well, yeah, let's do it. But they never kind of came through. Oh, man, that is one that I want to see. Man, yeah. I can't wait to see Gordon finally compete in the Gi again. I mean, we, oh, yeah. he did as, as, as a purple belt, right? I think it's the last time he did it, but... Mm -hmm. I think it's eminent. He's, he's registered for a few events, but then he got sick and some other things came up. So I think before, I'm going to put it out there, before the new year, Gordon will compete in at least one open gi tournament. I think you might be onto something here, Chase. Ooh. Because, and drum roll please, because big announcement, exclusive announcement, that the World Series of Grappling, they just hosted their first event approximately uh, two weeks ago, I believe. And it was a, uh, a kind of a sleeper hit. It came from nowhere offering a $20,000 cash prize to a combined brown and black belt, black, brown and black belt division, I believe. And um, man, like just from nowhere, huge money on the line. All the big names came out for it. Nobody really knew what to expect, but it's legit. And we have signed it to Flow Grappling. So you're now gonna be able to watch future World Series of Grappling events on Flow. I'm very happy about that. I love seeing more money in the sport too. That's super exciting. You yeah. know the guys are, are definitely geared up. I mean, twenty grand is a lot of money. A Apparently, lot of money. And there's, there's two weight divisions. There's two weight divisions. This technically is forty because there's over one eighty pounds, okay. uh, one hundred eighty pounds, and under one hundred eighty. So there's forty grand on the line. Right. I now. also love seeing the divisions mixed up like that. You get matches you mm -hmm. never get um, at an IBJJF event, for example. You, you had a brown belt win the, the, the under one hundred eighty. Jonathan's 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 crazy, crazy, right? Right? Yeah. yeah, and then a brand new black belt, Kain and Duarte, win the over one eighty. Two of those guys. 
I think, I think the idea of putting up your own money is kind of cool too, you know? It's like yeah, let's you, explain a little bit about how this money where your mouth is. So, yeah. you, you have to buy in, right? Mm -hmm. So it's $500, right? $500 buy-in. And then um, I think if you win first place, you get 20 grand. 20 grand. Right? Second place is 10 or, or 8 grand. And then third place, you, you walk away with a couple grand. And then I think fourth through 10th, you leave with 750 bucks. Yeah, 20 grand for the first place wow. is five grand for seconds, two grand for third place, one grand for fourth place, and then everybody from fifth through 10th gets $750. So if it's a $500 buy-in and you get your money back, the quarterfinals, plus. yeah, you, you walk away with 250 bucks. You might just need to win one match and you make your money back. Plus, I, I don't know, man. I think these divisions are going to they're they're come out They're going to They're going to blow this. up for yeah. sure. But yeah. you also get free entry no matter what to the next event. So you sort of, you know, it, it's an investment, I guess. If, if you... If you... if you 11th through 20th, get free event to the next event. Oh, wow. I mean, this is wow, great. Indeed, I mean, this yeah. is giving opportunities to guys who are professional grapplers to at least not lose money when they're going out to compete, right? You've got a chance to win money, but now you're also not losing money on event registration, maybe travel costs, whatever it is, you know? So and they've got plans for, a, like, a massive season ending event, correct? So the next event, uh, the first one that you'll be able to watch live on Flow is October 7th. And then the plan is to um, run events around the country um, in cities such as Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, New York, Florida, basically the hot spots for jujitsu and grappling all over the US and um, to run events approximately every six weeks or so. But the dates past October 7th are still TBD. But um, I'm imagining that it'll pick up steam pretty quick because we had 20 guys per division for the first event. I know the first event, nobody really knew what to expect. Now that they've seen it, now that they've seen those guys holding that gigantic check for 20 grand, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, wow, people are getting paid And the check is cashed, by the way. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, you know, there is actual money here. Yeah. There's an opportunity to make money, you know. It's in the gi. We could see Gordon coming out for an event like mm -hmm. this, right? That'd be crazy. I know if I won first place and got 20 grand, I would be putting my money back into this event and going to every single one because if they're doing an event every six weeks, you can make some money. That's some serious money right there. Yeah, it's make true. Some money. You can make a legit salary doing this. La guy, last one had, had Keenan and uh, James Popolo and John Disgrace. A lot of the other Atos guys did it. So, uh, they, if, you know, the first one uh, brought brought some names, and I Man, think the yeah. second one bring, even bring some more. It really did have some huge names. I mean, like tons of ADCC veterans, world champions. You had guys like Keenan Cornelius, Muhammad Ali. Uh, you had Kainan Duarte. You had Joao Assis. Mike Perez, Tarsis Humphreys. These are some big, big names, right? Smart move to run it right there in SoCal where yep. the where hub is. You know, it's not much of a time investment, even if it was a weird event that didn't work out. Yeah, it's my home hometown. Mm -hmm. But now it's now it's got some international clout where I think we'll see people traveling to these events. And it's and, and it's a tournament. I love tournaments. You yeah. Know, uh, compared to super fights. Super fights are great. You know, we love a good matchup. Um, but when these guys are going out and you don't know who you're going to face, you know, if you build these storylines. And then at the end of the day, I think they fight harder because, man, there's that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you know. So hey, you earn that both price. Both guys want to get paid, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, well, World Series of Grappling, very excited about that. Look for more details coming to Flow Grappling very soon um, as we get things like the, uh, the specifics over the season and we also get the details um, of who's competing. That's the other big one, right? Because mm -hmm. we want to know who's coming back for that. But uh, yeah, if um, Gordon's after that money, then I think that's a pretty Have good opportunity for him. Have you heard any other big him. names in this event coming up? In... In, the, in this uh, World Series of Grappling? October 7th? Yeah. Nobody announced yet. Oh, nobody announced. Nobody okay. announced yet. So. But we've heard, we've heard though, right, through the grapevine that some ADCC champions and also world champions are now interested in, in signing up. So. Absolutely, we have. Yeah, like through the through the back channels, we've uh, we've we've been told that some guys are definitely going to go after that cash. You guys but know the back channels. <laughs> you know <laughs> the, the, the DM networks, yeah. basically. Yeah. But, uh, the secret grappling for grapevine. Um, yeah, World Series of Grappling, man. That's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, Will, do you want to tell us what the uh, the poll was this week? Yes, drop some more heat uh, this morning on on Instagram. Speaking Direct all your anger, Gordon. by the way. No, I'm kidding. It's a group, it's a group choice. It's a group choice. Yeah, it's <laughs> not just me. <laughs> um, but so the question was, I actually just left it out there. Best leg locker, right? Question mark. So best leg locker. This was open to interpretation, and then I threw out six names. So six names: Gary Tonin, Craig Jones, Tokino, Rusmar Paul Harris. 
uh, Dean Lister, Eddie Wolverine Cummings, and then Gordon Ryan. Well, first off, I think that's a terrible list. <laughs> None of those guys deserve to be on there. No, for, for real. That is an insane. Like, how do you pick? Like six guys, the best leg locker? How do you pick? I saw a lot of people giving credit to Dean Lister as kind of like the, the OG of, of the leg lock game, the guy who brought it to a big stage. Can't say I can argue with that mentality, but the best ever? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's tough. tough. It's hard. They all have different locker. qualities. You know, like Dean Lister, he was the, uh, three of those guys on there. Probably we wouldn't know his leg lockers if it wasn't for Dean Lister, right? The Dan Desquad guys. Yeah. guys. Um, but you think of like Gary Tonin, for example. He's... I mean, he's not a one-dimensional leg locker. He takes the back, he wrestles, he's, he's, a, he's an opportunistic leg locker. G- Gary came to leg locks late, very late in his career, right? He was already a black belt by the time he started. Uh, by, by the time he started um, it's true. Tra- training he with Danaher. He was Dan more known for like a uh, guillotine, rear naked yeah, choke. Yeah, the yeah. lion killer, right? Yeah, Gary yeah. the lion killer. And then you've got guys like Eddie Cummings, who is pretty much exclusively a leg locker. So there's different things to take into account. If that was the case, if it was just leg locks, you know, like best, strictly best leg locker, I might say Eddie Cummings because that's, that's his bread and butter. That's, that's his thing. That's his go-to. That's what he does. Hmm. It's hard but to argue that. I, I, think, I think Gordon has to take it from me because he's done it at the highest stage. I mean, he's leg locking guys at ADCC. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It doesn't get better than that to me. Yeah, we, we talk about leg locks. I'm trying to think of, like, what's everybody's kind of biggest win via leg lock. Um, I'm, I, a party wants to say Gary Tonin, because I know he had his, his uh, he'd had a couple big wins from, uh, via leg lock. But I, I don't know. I probably got to agree with Chase and say mm-hmm. that that uh, I think Gordon's probably the best leg lock of the way he, the, the, the wins that he has under his belt via leg lock, especially, mm-hmm. I think that, that pushes me o- over the edge. Like, uh, guys like um, Cyborg and... Um, some others I can't think of at, at this moment, <laughs> but I, I remember specifically the cyborg, the cyborg one. Comes to mind that, too. that was that was a, a really crazy one. Yeah, uh, I, I I I kind of I I definitely agree with everything that you guys are saying right there. Um, Eddie is kind of the leg lock scientist of that group, isn't mm-hmm. he? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary definitely is a very well-rounded grappler. You know, people point to Craig as like a monster leg locker, but if you think about it, two of the biggest wins of his career, Murillo Santana and Leandro Lowe, those weren't leg locks. Yeah. Those were other submissions as far as a rear naked choke and a triangle. True, um, but I would say that he, the Leandro one came from him threatening the, the leg locks, oh, right? absolutely, right? yeah. I mean, he had him dead to rights and an inverted heel hook, and he's proved it against other grapplers that his yeah. leg lock game is really well developed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of maybe thinking Dean Lister would be an interesting mm. choice for that one because I think it was ADCC 2009, I want to say, Um 2000, uh, 2011, sorry, and and it's when he beat Adolfo Vieira, yeah. Joao Assis, and another guy called Radek Turek, um, all by leg locks. Well, you know, look, to if, win ADCC over 99 division. At, if you look at Dean Lister's history, um, in 2003, he was beating guys with heel hooks. So think about it. Like, think of the resources that some of these Dan Hurd Death Squad guys I want to change had. my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just remembered something. Who, who, was, who was teaching Dean Lister leg locks back then? I mean, there was no there was no YouTube. There was no instructional DVDs. Like, how was he going Man, out this there? this is a good question because he's kind of mentioned about how he's, like, got Sambo experience and stuff like that. But people don't realize that, that heel hooks aren't allowed in Sambo rules. Right. Mm. Like, they often say, Most like, oh, time. Sambo guys are the best heel hookers in the world and stuff. But you watch any Sambo tournament, and they're not heel hooking each other. They allowed a straight ankle and knee bar, but and they can reap. But you know they're not automatically awesome heel hookers. So it is kind of an interesting question. I'd love to sit Dean down and get the the full Some you know catch wrestling going on. Maybe who knows? Maybe yeah. yeah. So and he uh, and he brought it over to MMA as well. He was mm-hmm. a successful leg locker in MMA. So I was going to change my vote real quick. I just remembered that Craig Jones submitted Chael Sonnen with a heel hook. So <laughs> my vote has now been go, changed go. to Chael, to um, Craig Jones. Chael Sonnen. <laughs> <laughs> Still undefeated. Exactly. My vote has now been changed uh, to Chael Sonnen. Yeah. Wow. That is a yeah. That's a great topic. Again, who's the best leg locker in grappling? Uh, drop your comments. Uh, let's see who you got. Um, such a such a divisive topic, I'm sure. You know, there's so many guys that are right there too. Like uh, I mentioned them earlier, but Enrico Coco, uh, mm. he's got such a complete game. But he was one of the first guys to really embrace nogi only really competition mm-hmm. and and leg locks specifically. He had a great run, I think, at ADCC Trials. He's 
one at least once, maybe twice. Yeah. But there's a ton of guys. I think we should also mention that two of those guys on that list will be competing against each other at Kasai 3. So we'll get to see two leg lockers going at it, but we'll see. See how it turns out. Wow, nogi season, baby. Things are really going crazy, huh? Oh yeah. How about you guys? You training any nogi right now? Very little, actually, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been obsessed with the gi, and um, <laughs> lately at Paragon, it's been wrestling instead of nogi. So you really have to go out there and, and want to do some nogi at our gym at the moment. But I gotta, I'm dealing with a couple of bad knees right now. So, so like, come and in and let us practice some heel hooks. Yeah. Perfect. You're already yeah. Yeah. Heel hook. drilling partner yeah. for heel hooks right there. Perfect. <laughs> I don't train no gear anymore. I used yeah. to. Back when I was young and athletic and not anymore. I'm old and broken now. So. There was a time when, when we were we were getting into the heel hooks. We right were, after ADCC. It was, <laughs> like, okay, we got to uh, do Surprise, surprise. Yeah, uh, yeah I, guess we, I guess we haven't trained that much. Maybe we'll get the time. inspiration coming back, I guess. Yeah. It's, this uh, is the perfect time as well. Texas summer, 100 degree heat. Why do you want to roll around in that gigantic gi, right? True. Nothing, very true. nothing matters. I got to say, it's been quite cool, though, seeing on Instagram a lot of the guys like posting their training clips like, um, seeing the guys, uh, for example, I see like Edwin, uh, uh, your Gracie mm-hmm. Baja Northridge, you know, he straight up says, man, he almost never trains no gi, you know? Yeah. Like he went out and he tapped out a, a previous ADCC champion, Davi Hamos, and he trained no gi like three times before that match, you know? Um, but it's nice to see these guys. The Leo Vieira of, way. Of, yeah. <laughs> of training. Previous. But it's nice to see them getting back into it and it's nice to get some inspiration from. Uh, from that, right? Isn't there like an argument, like people say like, oh, you can train gi jiu-jitsu and it'll make you better at no gi, but like training no gi won't really make you better at gi? Yeah, I've never really bought that argument to be yeah. honest. Me either. I, I always thought it was kind of silly. Like, yeah. I think, I think no gi I think training... it's totally different, man. Because honestly, like black belt in gi, I feel sometimes like a purple belt in no gi because I just like, the timing is different, the grips are different, oh, my yeah, setups yeah. change completely. Yeah. I mean, if I was training both equally, then maybe, but I, I agree, like, you can't just take the gi off and expect to be a... a if you, you start know, allowing exactly reaping too, if you're playing like by ADCC rules, then, then there's no way you're as, as competent uh, in no gi because you don't ever see it in the gi, or very rarely unless you're at one of those weird gyms. So. Yeah, like those guys <laughs> like Saulo and Marcelo Garcia, who, you know, Vito Shaolin, they used to take the gi off three weeks before an ADCC and go in and win, you know? I mean, like... I so that's not this, fair. That, those guys are just like the best grapplers exactly, in the world, yeah. hands down. Like so like that's not fair. Zero one of the entire. <laughs> it hasn't translated for me. I, yeah. I don't know why. But but yeah. You guys said right there, grappling. I think when you're doing no gi jiu jitsu, you are you're grappling, right? You're mm-hmm. learning more of like how to use your body and hold people down, pinning and like securing people and and um, controlling limbs and joints is. Uh, you have to, you kind of have to do that more in no gi. So I think it makes you a better grappler, which translates then over to the gi. I agree, because you know a lot of guys will, um, they'll kind of talk shit about, for example, Tenth Planet, right? Because they don't train in the gi at all, and yet it's called Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu. And when Eddie created his Tenth Planet team and his no gi system, a lot of the traditionalists was like, "It's not Jiu Jitsu because you don't train in the gi." Mm-hmm. You know, that was the that was the major kind of attack against it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what is it if it's not jujitsu? Is it just submission grappling? You know, and it's a very distinctive style of that. But I wouldn't right. be upset if it was called that. I think the the games are different, and I I think jujitsu's identity is definitely tied up with the gi. I think you cannot take that away. I do think you can be good at both, and that I'm not offended or, or, or need feel the need to defend. Um, Jiu-jitsu in the gi only, like, like if a 10th planet guy says he does jiu-jitsu, then okay, that's fine, whatever. But yeah, well, I, I would call know, it more submission grappling. You know what I liked was ADCC, uh, ever since day one, they've always called it submission fighting. Mm. Submission fighting and that's right. kind of cool because ADCC always invited guys from different grappling styles. Right. And it was meant to be almost like a, because, you know, a lot of the inspiration, it was founded in the 90s when a lot of it was still in MMA. It was style versus style. So they had the same approach in grappling, style versus style. Can judo beat wrestling? Can mm-hmm. wrestling beat jiu-jitsu? Can wrestling beat judo? Et cetera, et cetera. Big yeah. right? questions, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, cool. and I, I like the way that they've kind of stayed true to that a little bit because ADCC matches do not look like matches that you'll see in no-gi tournaments mm-hmm. or submission only or whatever. It's it's different, right? The emphasis on the wrestling, the negative points of pulling guard, the different submissions that are allowed. It's, it is a different style of grappling. I yeah, think. and how they uh, let the uh, the match just kind of go wherever it goes. Out of bounds. A, l- a no lot problem. of times. Yeah. <laughs> they just let the scramble happen. If you're on a, a 
basketball gym floor or on the <laughs> mat, whatever. Now don't stop until you're physically told to stop and yeah. pulled away because you will get tapped. Yeah, yeah that's the, definitely the fighting element. I think right there summed <laughs> up, right? Getting, getting yeah. back to the 10th Planet, though, like, so when Eddie Bravo created this system, right, his roots were in jiu-jitsu. Oh, Eddie Bravo is a geek guy, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, he's from... Jean-Jacques Machado, Jean -Jacques, yeah. right? So... I think it's who incidentally though is an amazing geek guy but also an ACC, ACC champion, champion yeah. so no I think if you you know that's his, it's not like Eddie Bravo went out and learned submission grappling from somebody he learned jiu-jitsu and then just took the gi off and then created a system around it so I think he's he's a wrestler too Eddie he, he was, was a wrestler before he wrestled. he started jiu-jitsu he wrestled mm -hmm. yeah in high school and stuff got the right? twister from that right yeah, they, they, call, they call it the, the guillotine right guillotine, in wrestling yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a pin right yeah yeah, yeah. A horrible, horrible one. leg wrap <laughs> position. Yep. Yeah, that, that would suck in wrestling. You can't really tap. You're just no. sitting there like oh, I think God, actually, my neck. from what I've heard, like it got guys like who get pinned with a guillotine will literally scream at the referee, "I'm pinned! I'm pinned!" Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't blame them. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, you want to get out of that fast as you can. Ugh. Yeah, but you know, man, I, I'm super excited for no gi season. There's so much yeah. happening. There's a lot the of stuff to watch. The banana split, also a wrestling move. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, from the same position that you get the twister in. I guess that, that makes sense, right? Yeah, that twister. Yeah, it's I think that also was, a pin. That's one thing that we didn't mention with uh, with Nogi season is all the wrestling. You know, wrestling yeah. is really encouraged. And PJ Barch, who is going to be on Kasai 3. D1 wrestler, right? D1 wrestler, 10th Planet guy. And he's we saw him at the, the Rise 4, Rise Invitational 4. He's got really good wrestling. Yeah, that's like a nightmare combo. 10th Planet, weirdness. Plus D1 pressure wrestling, like I don't want any part of that. That's true. Yeah, we saw a little bit of him on that Japanese event quintet recently mm. as well. I think he fought to a draw in each of his matches, mm. but we did see some really nice wrestling in that as well. And it's uh, it's nice to see it mixed up because you know um, Eddie's style, stroke system, a lot of it came from him in the early days. So a lot of the guys used to play very much like Eddie's game. A lot of the lockdown, a lot of the rubber guard, but. As the team has grown and as the style has developed and, and the, you know, the, the kind of, it's evolved, shall we say, you've got great leg lockers like Marvin Castell. You've got great rubber guard players like uh, Boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And then you've got guys like Gio, who is an absolute back-taking machine, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's great to see somebody like PJ come out of 10th Planet with a, a completely different style again, right? Shout out to Jeremiah Vance, too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Submission wizard. Yeah. yeah. Dark Poss wizard. Possibly wizard. the most <laughs> creative submissions I've seen. Like, wow. Yeah, he's pulling off ones that none of us have ever seen, mm -hmm. like, consistently. <laughs> yeah, Speaking yeah. of Nogi... Something that we've been working on at Flow Grappling, we've got no gi rankings coming out. Ooh. So dropping imminently, spicy. <laughs> yeah, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah th th those should definitely start some conversations. The uh, no gi rankings is a lot of fun because we'll see some names that we wouldn't otherwise see. Because just to be clear, our our gi rankings are exclusively black belts, right? That's right. But no gi, some of those guys aren't necessarily ranked. Right, you have like it's different in Nogi, right? It's yeah. like uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced. So that's why you can see guys like Nicky Ryan taking on, you know, who's a purple belt, but he's facing <laughs> black belts, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing that I was really surprised or just, you know, interested to see was the amount of Americans on our gi rankings. Mm. So we've got a real dominant Brazilian presence on the on the gi rankings, but Nogi is a lot of Americans and a lot more Tenth Planet guys too out there. Very interested to see how uh, how those stack up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, guys, I think it's been a very very cool episode of this. It's nice to talk about some nerdy stuff, a little yeah. bit different, right? Shake things up yeah. a bit. Bring <laughs> 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 <Nah, laughs> that to terrible. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, back um, next week, it'll probably be Chase and I alone because these guys are going to be in New York for Kasai Pro. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you again for another episode of your favorite Jiu Jitsu podcast. See you later. <laughs>